Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Discover Dornsife program. We are so thrilled to have you join us today as we explore the natural sciences and mathematics fields at USC. This event is being hosted by the Dornsife Office of Admission and Student Success. My name is Courtney Bird, and I am one of the staff members in this office. And because you will be hearing from some of them later in the Q&A, I would like to welcome all of my staff members as well to kind of give a quick wave so that you'll all get a chance to see who they are as well. All right, thank you. So while this is a webinar, we will have the opportunity for you to ask our panel some questions. You will see at the bottom of your screen that there is a Q&A box. We do ask that you please hold your questions for now so that you get a chance to really hear from our panelists. We will have time for those questions later on. So for now, let's go ahead and bring in our panel so you can get to know the USC Dornsife students who will be sharing their experiences with you. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Awesome. Um, my name is Alex, I'm a senior from Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm currently studying economics and mathematics as my major. I have a minor in psychology and I plan on working in the financial services industry um, after I graduate. Welcome everybody, my name is Avonlea Valdez and I'm a sophomore at USC from Rockland, California. I am a biochemistry major with minors in healthcare studies and Spanish, and I am currently hoping to work in the healthcare field. Hi everyone, my name is Jackson. I'm a junior at USC. I am from Dallas, Texas with majors in environmental studies and archaeology, as well as minors in spatial studies and classical perspectives. And I'm looking at attending graduate school after I finish at USC. Hi everyone, my name is Layla. I am a sophomore here at USC. I'm originally from Mission Viejo, California. Right now I'm majoring in neuroscience and minoring in cultural anthropology and dynamics in early childhood. And right now I'm thinking about going into education design and reform. All right, thank you and welcome to all of our panelists. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in and talk about the curriculum and the courses that you're gonna be taking while you're a USC student. The courses are gonna be made up from a couple of different areas. You're going to have your major and the courses that are required for that particular major. There's also a two course writing requirement, a lower division and an upper division course. We have our foreign language requirement, which all students in Dornsife are required to complete. And then we have our general education or our GE requirement. Now we'll get a little bit into some of these other components later, but I'd like to start with our panelists with your major, because the major is going to comprise the bulk of this, the courses that you take in Dornsife. So if we could have everyone maybe elaborate on your majors and your maybe your, some of your minors, because we all know that Majors can be in different sizes, and so sometimes to make up some of those extra units, you can add something like a minor. And so why don't we go ahead and start with Alex? Yeah, so my major, Economics and Mathematics, is actually a combined major. So I'm kind of getting like half of my bulk coursework in Econ and the other in Math. And it's really cool to kind of see how they both kind of relate to each other, but that they're also distinct fields. And then pairing that kind of with my psychology minor, even though it's not necessarily STEM, I think really works well because it gives a like kind of human perspective or, you know, looking at how people behave and think and using that into more like quantitative fields is really cool. As I mentioned earlier, I'm currently a biochemistry major, but I initially came in as a chemistry major. However, once I started looking at the upper division coursework, I realized that advanced physics and all of that imaginary math really was not for me. So I decided to make the switch to biochemistry, which for me is the perfect blend between biology and chemistry, not too much math, but not too much science thinking. So it's perfect for me. I ended up adding on a Spanish minor because I have had experience with the language and then a healthcare studies minor as well, just because it has some really interesting healthcare based classes such as survival and wilderness medicine and cadaveric anatomy. 
Yeah, so I'm an environmental studies and archaeology major. I really love both of these majors because they have a huge focus on interdisciplinary studies. And so especially with environmental studies at a lot of other universities, um, they more, have more of an environmental science focus. Um, but coming into USC, I knew that I wanted to explore other ways in which the environment can be studied. And so with the environmental studies degree, in addition to learning about like conservation and sustainability sciences and atmospheric sciences, which you think of as environmental studies, um, you also get a huge um, portion of social sciences and natural sciences, including biology, chemistry, as well as IR, political science, economics, all combining to make a really robust um, education in um, environmental studies. Um, with that, I've also kind of gone into other fields such as archaeology and learning about past climates and how these affected past peoples, as well as an aspect of spatial studies where I've gotten to do more of a technical aspect on um, urban health and environmental health um, by learning to use programs such as ArcGIS in kind of making maps and getting a very analytical way to look at the environment. So kind of at USC, you can combine all of these different pursuits to really make your academic study unique to what you're interested in and also so that you are competitive when looking for a job. Yeah, so I came into USC not really certain of what I wanted to study. I knew that I loved the brain and so I was going forward with neuroscience. Um, I thought that maybe a pre-med track was right for me, but after taking a lot of those types of courses, I realized that maybe a Bachelor of Arts was better than a Bachelor of Sciences. Um, and I was able to do that from some of my general education courses. I learned that I'm very passionate about having a multidisciplinary approach to my education. Um, and as I was able to take different neuroscience courses and learn more about what affects the brain, I was really interested in how culture influences the way that we develop alongside with education. Um, and so that's kind of how I found my two minors in cultural anthropology and education. Um, and I was able to do that through talking with my advisor. I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and because taking a Bachelor of Arts instead of a Bachelor of Sciences eased it up on some of those upper division electives, I've been able to cram a lot into my course schedule, which I'm excited for in the upcoming years. As you can see, a lot of our students have a lot of interdisciplinary interests and different programs that they have combined here at USC. I do want to kind of point out a little bit that you are not absolutely required to stick with the major that you apply to USC Dornsife with. Avonlea changed her major from chemistry to biochemistry. And I also want to mention that, you know, adding these programs, you know, Layla talked about having this minor and her minor is actually in the Rossier School of Education. So adding these programs doesn't also have to be within Dornsife. But I want to talk a little bit as well about our general education or our GE program. Because this is really one area where students get to kind of explore outside of their major and potentially cover some of the GE requirements with their major, but this is really the chance for them to explore, the chance to take something outside of their, their selected major, their selective, selected degree or their emphasis, and really expose yourself to other areas of study within Dornsife as well as across USC. Alex, how would you say your kind of GE experience has been so far? It's honestly been one of um, my favorite parts of my educational path. Um, I've taken like several GEs so far, and I think a couple of my favorites have been one called surveillance culture, and that was actually an arts um, GE. And so we looked at kind of different texts, um, artwork, films that kind of commented on like the surveillance state of the world right now. We also learned about whistleblowers and kind of like the CIA and the NSA and all these different um, institutions and kind of how there's like no like no such thing as privacy anymore today and kind of what that means for us. And another one that I found really interesting that I'm actually taking right now is Life in the Universe. It's an astronomy GE. And that whole class is really centered around the question, like, are we alone? So it's really cool um, learning about all the different planets and like the moons and seeing what conditions for life there are and kind of exploring space in that perspective. How about Avonlea? Is there anything else that you'd like to add about your GE experience? 
Sure thing. So freshman year, I had to take a history GE and I decided to take a Chinese civilization, which is in the East Asian Studies Center because I'm really interested in Asian history because all I learned about in um, high school was European history and American history. And I kind of wanted to branch out. And I'm not really a history person, but this class was amazing. The professor was really engaging. And I think my favorite part was we got to go on a field trip to a Buddhist temple. So that was pretty interesting to see a different religion, how they practice and the architecture there was beautiful. So it's pretty cool to learn about a new culture that way. Thank you. And so these are just some snapshots of some of the hundreds of GE courses that we offer that can fulfill 10 different requirements that students are asked to complete before graduation. And they're really a chance for students to, to become very well rounded and, and to, to really take this chance to explore. You will see something that other students are going to participate in, which is an alternative GE system called thematic option. And two of our students are going to speak a little bit about that today. But Jackson, why don't we go ahead and start with you about thematic option, maybe a little bit about what it is and how your experience has been so far. Yeah, so thematic option is an honors interdis interdisciplinary GE program um, where you can substitute most of your GEs for kind of existing in a specific program that is known as thematic option. And with this, you get um, kind of a community of people who your freshman year you meet, you're all thematic option students. And throughout the four years, you'll see a lot of them in the various classes that you take throughout the program. Um, the program's major focus is kind of answering these big questions and kind of looking at things maybe from a philosophical standpoint, but also a historical and social sciences standpoint. So it's kind of breaking boundaries between a lot of disciplines. Um, another cool thing about it is the thematic option um, kind of office hosts a bunch of different events throughout Los Angeles, going on camping trips, going on, um, going to visit museums and going to plays. So it's a good way to meet people who are also participating in this program and make friends. And the most um, beneficial thing that I found about this program is instead of taking the two um, writing courses that everyone has to take at USC one year freshman year and one around your junior year, they move the junior year class to your second semester freshman year. So you're getting this upper level um, writing course that really improves, or at least it really improved my writing at the start of your USC experience. So you can take these skills that you learned in going into your sophomore and junior year rather than waiting. Thank you. And Layla, you participated in something called Thematic Option Book Club, is that correct? Yes. So that's actually not something that's put on by thematic options, but like Jackson was talking about, the thematic option program fosters a really strong sense of community. And um, that's also done by the really small class sizes. I think my thematic option classes are around maybe 20 people to each of them. And in my last thematic options class, which was a revolutions and rebellions class that I absolutely loved, um, it was actually happened to fall during the our school's transition into Zoom and quarantine. Um, so those classes we had a lot of really awesome conversations in and uh, we wanted to continue that on during the summer. And so our class actually came together with our professor and decided to start a book club that our professor hosted just for our class and some other thematic option students throughout the summer. And it was really fun. We came together um, every two weeks and just discussed books and life. And it was a great way to keep each other um, active and in company with one another. Thank you. So thematic option is one GE alternative that we have. And you'll see when you're looking at the GE requirements that a lot of the courses, the introductory courses for our natural science and math majors actually cover, cover some of the GE requirements. In terms of general biology and general chemistry, which a lot of our natural science majors do have to take, they themselves also have an alternative program as well called freshman science honors which is honors level for, uh, general biology and honors level general chemistry. And these are a requirement for our freshmen. So unfortunately, our transfer students are not eligible for this particular program. But for freshmen who are interested in freshman science honors, Avonlea, can you tell us a little bit about more how, how that experience was? Yes, so I was in freshman science honors last year. As Courtney was saying, it's an advanced program for declared science major freshmen. 
And the reason why I chose it was because the freshman science honors classes are much smaller than the general chemistry and general biology. My class was maybe about 57 people, which is much more reduced than the 100 plus students in general chemistry. So this meant that I had a lot of one on one time with my professors and my TAs. And then also I really got to build a community with the students because there was such a small group of us. We went on trips together. We studied together. Um, one of the field trips, we went to the tide pools to learn about the different animals that live there. So it's a great way to meet people who are as passionate about science as you are, and you end up seeing a lot of these people in your upper division science classes too. Thank you. And for anyone who was wondering, that, pro that program is called our Freshman Science Honors Program. And so switching gears just a little bit, being a Dornsife student is about more than just the degree that you will have within Dornsife. It's also about the co-curricular and the extracurricular opportunities that you'll have to be able to participate in. Some of the ones we're gonna to cover today are research, study abroad, internships, and service learning. So why don't we go ahead and start with research. And Layla, could you maybe tell us a little bit about the research that you have been participating in? Yeah, so recently I joined uh, the Cross-Cultural Social Emotion Lab at USC's uh, Brain and Creativity Institute, which is a really awesome institute at USC that focuses on a more holistic and interdisciplinary approach to neuroscience as a whole. Um, and the specific lab that I'm working in is part of the Center for Affective Neuroscience Development, Learning and Education, which is actually a joint program with the Rosier School of Education, which is super awesome. And um, so I just started working with them. I actually heard about the lab through my advisor, my neuroscience advisor, and through um, a two-unit neuroscience course that all neuroscience freshmen take, where basically for professors just come and talk to you about their research. And I was really interested after um, Professor Imordino Yang, who I'm working under, spoke to our class. And so I just emailed her a few questions, and she was like, hey, like, you have great questions. Do you want to come work for us? And I was like, that sounds amazing. Um, so for me, finding research was really easy, really simple. And um, I found that the support that we get from the professors and the faculty really is to support and foster our own interests within the lab, um, which has been really awesome for me to be able to grow and kind of find my own research avenues. Thank you. Alex, would you be able to tell us a little bit about your experience in the Behavioral and Experimental Economics Research Group? Yeah, so I'm a senior now, but I actually was involved with that the spring semester of my freshman year. So kind of like Layla was saying, you can get involved with research pretty ex like easily and, and as soon as you start. Um, and so in that lab, our goal essentially was to look at the social and cognitive well-being of people everywhere. And one of the projects I was working on was looking at the data provided from a preschool that was actually built in Chicago years ago and looking at how kind of the early interventions in education then impacted the people who went to that preschool um, years later up to present day. So it was really cool looking at all of those variables and kind of using like mathematical regressions and other techniques to look at the um, correlation correlations between these variables. Um, and besides that, besides the kind of like, you know, behind the scenes um, mathematical part, I got to speak with a lot of the participants and kind of schedule appointments for further studies. So it was a really good, well-rounded introduction to research, I would say, at USC. Thank you. And these are definitely snapshots of some of the amazing experiences that our students are participating in, in terms of research. Any student who really wants to participate in research absolutely can. There's no timeline as to when you have to start it. There's no requirement necessarily to actually be involved in research. But USC being a tier one research university, a lot of our faculty members are doing some pretty cool things. And we even have programs for funding and stipends available for our students to help cover some of the costs of being involved in these positions, whether it's over the summer or during the school year as well. Something else that a lot of our students like to participate in are study abroad. And being a natural science major or a mathematics major, you absolutely can study abroad, even if you are pre-health. We currently have about 55 programs in over 30 countries in terms of the full semester long programs. And some of them actually have the option to go abroad for a full academic year. 
if that maybe full semester program isn't for you, we have a couple of smaller programs. One of those is called a Maymester, which oftentimes doesn't actually start until your other classes in the spring end. It is part of your spring registration, so you might be focusing on maybe three classes and then this fourth class will start after finals, or you'll have a couple meetings throughout the semester and then this Maymester will have a travel component after finals. Um, and these are a little bit smaller, you know, they're maybe four weeks long after the spring semester ends, but it does give you a chance to go abroad for maybe a shorter period of time. The other smaller opportunity that we have is what's called a Problems Without Passports. And this is a summer course that's more of a research problem solving type environment. And Jackson, you participated in a PWP, a Problems Without Passports, um, with Tropical Ecosystem Management. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, so as Courtney was saying, we have these really small abroad opportunities for students who don't think they'll be able to fit these large semester programs into their schedule. And so I was fortunate enough right before my sophomore year um, to get to do a class where we were learning about um, how the oceans will be affected um, by climate change. And so during this class, we spent um, one our first week on Catalina Island off the coast of Los Angeles um, at USC's beautiful Wrigley Institute. Um, which is our marine science center, our environmental science center, where um, students from all across the university can have opportunities to go visit, stay there, um, and do various things. And so that was kind of where we were being trained um, to do underwater research. Um, I'm a scuba diver, and, but there were a lot of people who were snorkeling in this class. Um, but this was training us, like going through the help, kelp forest, looking at like different animals, doing running various scientific tests underwater there. Um, but this prepared us to then go spend two weeks um, on Andrews Island in the Bahamas. Um, and so we were at a really small research base, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, it didn't have any air conditioning, but it was very kind of community building because these classes are oftentimes very small. And kind of while we were there, we basically would wake up, eat breakfast, get on a boat, and go out into the ocean and do research all day, stop on one of the smaller islands for lunch, and kind of repeated that for two weeks. Um, and it teaches you um, kind of that as a college student in Los Angeles, you're not getting this full perspective on the world around you. Um, and instead that there are so many different ways that you can um, learn. And so it was super valuable as kind of my first introduction to research at USC. Um, and it was the perfect way to start off that summer. No air conditioning, but it is the Bahamas, so <laughs> I'd take it. All right, so another component that a lot of students really find important and that helps prepare them for their careers after Dorn's life is internships. And Alex, I know that you have had a few different internships, and so I was wondering if you could maybe tell us a little bit about how you found those and what your experience was like being an intern while a student. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my first internship, I had one each summer, but again, that's like by no means necessary. It's just kind of the path I decided to explore. Um, one, I just kind of returned home and explored the options that were around me and I worked with a real estate brokerage and kind of learned the ins and outs of um, kind of the real estate market and things like that. Um, but after that, um, my second internship was this past summer and unfortunately due to the, due to, uh, due to the coronavirus, um, the original plans were kind of cancelled. So I had to do my own research again and kind of find out what I could do like when I was returning home. And I found out that there was a, a nonprofit that had some internships locally. And they said, just apply, send your cover letter, things like that. So I did. And the fact that I was also a USC student was something they brought up in the interview. And they kind of saw that, oh, you come from like a pretty good place, but you have probably lots of experiences. You're probably being really well educated where you are. So that couple of the experience I had so far um, made me a really good fit. And so during that internship, I um, created a scholarship for LGBTQ plus and low income students um, throughout the state of Nevada where I'm from. And I also worked on legislation to um, pass bills in the state of Nevada, state of Nevada that would um, increase exposure to LGBTQ plus history throughout the state. Um, so besides those, I'm currently doing a remote internship and I actually got this one through USC Dornsife. Um, so they are partnering with a company that connects you to other companies 
throughout the world. Um, so you're actually interning with international companies. And I'm working with a company in China where we work on um, developing Western brands and kind of introducing them to the Chinese market. And two of them that uh, are two of those, I guess, brands that we're working on building within our own office is one for a coffee kind of e-commerce platform and another one, which probably don't have time to talk about, but looking at, um, you know, target audiences, kind of the market in China and how all of that comes together to make these brands successful is what I've been doing. And US has been a big, big part in helping me get those opportunities. Thank you. Yes, there's a few different resources for students to find internships, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, in a little bit. Um, but USC does have its main career center. And then in Dornsife, we have a program called Dornsife Career Pathways, which specializes in internship and career advising specifically for our Dornsife students to help you find those internships and those opportunities after you graduate. So the last experiential learning piece that we want to cover is service learning. And there's a few different ways to get involved. USC has hundreds of student organizations on campus that do get involved in service learning. Um, but one program that we have is the Joint Educational Project. And that particular program offers a few different areas for students to get involved. And Avonlea, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your experience with the Trojan Health Volunteers. Absolutely. So as Courtney was saying, JEP or Joint Educational Project is a service learning department within Dornsife that offers several programs for students to volunteer in the local community. So in Trojan Health Volunteers, students can volunteer at local hospitals. I really liked volunteering at hospitals in high school, so I knew that I wanted to continue this in college. And they offer multiple hospitals that you can volunteer at in the local LA um, area that all have something a little bit unique to offer. So I'm currently volunteering at the California Hospital Medical Center. And what I liked about this program is that it filters in a specific program for USC students where you, after you reach about 100 hours, I believe, you can do clinical rotations with the doctors on site at the time. So I personally don't know if I want to go to medical school yet. So this is a great opportunity for me to shadow people and see what their day is like before I make a big decision. And then in addition to this, another thing I like about Trojan Health Volunteers is that we have discussions three times a semester about current healthcare issues. This week, we just had a discussion about the free healthcare system in Canada and the pros and cons. So it's really interesting to see other pre-meds takes and opinions on these topics. Thank you. And Jackson, I was wondering if you could maybe tell us a little bit about your JEP experience, JEP experience with marine biology. Yeah, so as part of one of the clubs that I'm in called SE Underwater, um, we wanted to have a larger impact in the community. And so we decided that we would start an initiative where we would teach a JEP class, um, which is where you go into an out local elementary school and you teach these um, students about a particular issue. Um, so my team of people in our club, um, we would go to um, teach second and third graders every week about marine biology. And so that was just an extracurricular JEP opportunity, but a lot of people are offered um, by many of their classes to do these teaching projects for extra credit. And so it's just a super way, super good way um, to sometimes earn extra credit, but also just to use what you're learning at USC um, to provide help to a teacher who's doing a lot, um, especially um, when they are kind of working with these younger kids, um, but also just to um, give back to a community in which sometimes we feel like we're a bubble um, and not sharing an area with people. Mm -hmm. And so JEP can definitely be a natural science component as well. Alex, I think you had a little bit of a different experience with French and JEP. Yeah, so I actually worked with, I think, three other students in one of my French classes. And we uh, taught for an hour every single week, um, second graders, just kind of basic French. So we walked or biked wherever to, um, we were going to the school and kind of created lesson plans, worked with the teacher to see what kinds of things the students liked and, you know, just taught them like alf the alphabet, different foods, numbers, things like that. And it was really cool just seeing how we could actually have like a tangible impact on, on these students' lives because they would kind of 
draw us pictures and just give us like hugs at the end of class and things like that. So it was just a really great way to be um, in touch with the community. Thank you, everybody. So before we transition into the support resources that are available for our Dornsife students, I want to let everybody know that we are going to open the Q&A box for audience questions. So please use the Q&A box and not the chat feature. We will take some of the questions live and others will be answered by members of the Dornsife admission team. So please make sure you are checking the answered tab if you submit a question. If there are questions about pre-health, we will try and get to as many of those as we have time. But I do want to let you all know that we have an event next week dedicated entirely to pre-health. So as everyone kind of gets their questions going, let's go ahead and talk about some of the support resources. We have academic advising, pre-professional advising, and working with our faculty. So starting with academic advising, Dornsife's academic advisors are full-time staff professionals who they specialize in the major that they advise. This is what they do. They know the curriculum backwards and forwards. They've developed relationships with the faculty. And the advisors are really the go-to point person for any student questions or needs. Layla, how has your experience been with your neurobiology advisor? I absolutely love my uh, neuroscience advisor. Her name is Tony, and we meet all the time. She is always down to talk with me, whether it's about my experience at USC, if I need help with my grades, my classes, um, or just basic course planning. Um, recently, I was having one of those existential crises where you don't know what you want to do with your life or what major you want to be in. Um, and so I emailed Tony, and she immediately set up a meeting with me. And she pointed me to a host of different resources and strategies to try and figure out what I'm interested in and what I could pro possibly apply my skills in neuroscience towards. Um, she also gave me, um, contacted me with um, some of her older students that are seniors in the neuroscience major so that I was able to talk with them, see what their major minor course plans look like and how I can maybe follow that or see what I'm interested in. Um, she also directed me towards the lab that I started working in um, which I discussed beforehand, but it's basically just about how culture and education affect neurodevelopment and how we can use this information and research to inform um, policy change within schools. Um, so I was able to talk with a neuroscience student who was taking the same cl classes as me, who wanted to take an education minor and who was also working in the lab. So I've had an amazing experience with my academic advising. Thank you. Alex, is there anything that you'd like to add about your experience with advising? Sure, so I wouldn't say mine is kind of as specific as that, but I also have really great um, experiences with it. So for example, um, with my major and my minor, I'm actually having two advisors work together to make sure kind of all my classes are fitting together and like not overlapping and making sure I'm going to graduate on time. Um, and my other experience was actually during my freshman year, even before I had my minor, I was working with my advisor and I was kind of just stressed about, you know, I have these classes I'm taking this semester right now, but I have no idea how the rest of my four years is going to play out. So she actually took the time to build a four-year plan with me and kind of constructed a possible schedule for every single semester from there on out, which was really helpful. So they're honestly, honestly just there to help you out and make your life easier. Thank you. And, you know, as Alex mentioned, you may have multiple academic advisors because each major and each minor has a specified academic advisor. So if you have a major and three minors, you're automatically going to have four academic advisors who are going to work together with you to make sure that you complete all the courses on time for when you want to graduate. So another area of advising that we have is pre-professional advising. And for us, this falls into a couple of different areas. We talked a little bit before about Dornsife Career Pathways, which is kind of our mini career center specifically for Dornsife students. This office can help with career and major exploration. So maybe you know what career you want, but you don't know what major to help you get there, or you know the major you like, but you don't really know what you can do with it. This is the office to help you with that. They can also help with the internship and the job search. They can help you with mock interviews and help you with interview preparation. And so this office is one of our key resources for internships and the job search. We also have advising in a couple of other areas for pre-health, pre-law, and pre-graduate school. Pre-law is pretty straightforward. It covers students who are interested in going to law school, and they will help you with the application process, and they offer a free practice LSAT for students. 
as well as host the pre-law fair where they bring different law schools to campus so that you can make connections with representatives from those programs. We also have our pre-health advising office, which can help students prepare for research and internships and volunteering. And what does it look like to be a pre-health student? When do I get involved in all these extracurriculars? What is the application like? When do I study for and take the MCAT or the DAT? And so this office will help you with all of those resources. And then our pre-graduate school advising office covers students who are interested in every other type of graduate program. Um, and they also offer one-on-one -on -one advising as well as these other offices. They offer program info sessions. They help participate and put on the graduate school's fair so that you can, again, get connected to other programs. And so these are three other areas which you will add advising um, on top of your academic advisors to help you kind of explore what it's gonna be and what it's gonna be like and what it's gonna take to participate in programs after USC Dornsife. And another resource that a lot of students don't necessarily think of offhand, but that we absolutely encourage students to get connected with is working with your faculty. And Jackson, how has your experience been working with Professor Wilson? Yeah, so in addition to all of the professors that you take classes with having office hours where you can go and ask questions or just go and chat with them, I've had the special opportunity to work very closely um, with a professor who's the head of the Spatial Sciences Institute at USC um, named Professor John Wilson. And it's been very awesome to get to work this closely with a professor who's this kind of wise about everything that's going on in his field um, because you get attention that teaches you kind of how to do research better and also how to take these research skills and apply them to your future um, plans with life. Um, so I was lucky enough during my sophomore year um, to be a geodesign fellow. And basically what that is, it was a year long, including the summer um, research fellowship um, in kind of the public health and spatial studies um, aspects where we were studying um, how traffic pollution affects people in different parts of LA and how um, the city can make the most of any urban improvements that they wanted to make. And so this was super cool because between weekly meetings with this professor, um, getting invited to go to various conferences with him um, and giving presentations at these conferences. Um, we also were connected to a lot of important people working on sustainability within the city of LA. And so I was working kind of as a consultant for the city for the entire summer. And this opportunity was only because of the, prof um, of the professor I was working with. Um, so they have your interests, they want you to succeed and they're all super accessible. Um, and so a lot of times just to get the support from the professor, all it takes is having a conversation with them or signing up for a program with them. Thank you. So thank you so much for all of this information from our student panelists. We are going to transition now to our Q&A. So thank you for sending those questions through the Q&A box. And I'm going to start with a broad question for anyone who would like to start with. Of, do you have any advice when completing the application process for high school seniors? You know, what made you stand out when writing your essays? And for anyone who doesn't know yet, we do have a supplemental question for the Dornsife portion of the Common App this year and moving forward. Um, but for any of our students who would like to start, you know, what, what made you feel like you stood out? I can start. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll start that one. Um, so I would say that giving, I guess, specific reasons or resources um, that you see at Dornsai for at USC as a whole, that kind of really excites you because if that's the case, then you're clearly passionate about it and whoever's reading your application will kind of get to know that kind of passion. If you kind of aren't really giving much of those details, it could be kind of hard to see, okay, well, like what exactly or how exactly will this student fit in? Um, and like, I think a good, um, I guess, key to thinking about it is if you can switch like USC's name with another college or another program or something like that, um, maybe you should look into different aspects or kind of do a little bit more research just so that we um, can really understand why this would be a good fit for you. Yeah, going off of that, I would say in the application process, I was really trying to find how I would 
what the school, what would it look like for me to go to this school? What clubs would I be interested in joining? What programs would I be interested in being involved with? Uh, what professors I would want to seek out and um, use as resources? Um, so I definitely agree with everything Alex was saying. And I would also just say that USC, I find, is really just trying to find out who you are and what your interests are. So I would say, I know this is a very general thing, but just stay as true to who you are and your interests within your application. And if you are a right fit, like that will shine through, through your own personal statements. Um, so yes, just stay true to who you are. Thank you. So we have a couple of questions related to AP scores. So submitting AP and IB scores. And scores of certain, of, on certain levels of both AP and IB can fulfill some of the GE and freshman science honors program. And I believe we were, are also going to send a couple of links through the chat, uh, sorry, through the uh, Q&A box so that you can actually see a little bit more about our transfer credit process. But it is possible that some of the scores on the AP and the IB exams can satisfy both GE requirements, some major requirements, um, but with freshman science honors, that program does require completion of our series. Um, but it is possible that they can satisfy some of the GE requirements as well as some of the lower division major requirements. This next question is for Layla. What would you say sets USC's neuroscience program apart from others? Yeah, so that's a great question. I would say that the two main things that have really stood out to me during my experience in neuroscience at USC is the multidisciplinary aspect uh, and approach that the neuroscience program takes and also the access that you have to USC resources and professors. I'm currently taking a class right now that is taught by the Dean of Neuroscience who is doing his own novel research. He's the person that discovered the gene that is your, um, that's like capsaicin. It's supposed to taste like menthol flavors, which I think is just so fascinating. Like we have access to these people who are pioneers in this field and they are people that I talk to on a daily basis. I meet with them twice a week for office hours. Um, I would just say the accessibility and support within the program because it is, although, although it can be sometimes feel like a large cohort, you really get to know your students very well and you get to know your teachers very well. Um, so I would say that and I would also going back to the interdisciplinary approach just I think that it's so amazing that you know you can take STEM courses but not be boxed into that specific STEM field like for me being able to incorporate cultural anthropology within my research and my education um, has been super amazing um, so yeah I think those are the two main things that I would say thank you so kind of going along with some of the majors Avonlea, somebody would like to know what you feel the benefits of switching from chemistry to biochemistry were. So as I said before, um, when looking at the coursework for the chemistry, they have advanced organic chemistry, advanced inorganic, advanced physics, and I was just looking and I was like two years in the future, you know, I can't see myself doing well in these classes. I'm not in love. Whereas with the biochemistry degree, there's a lot more biology incorporated. And this also goes into me being pre-health. I still kind of want to stay on the pre-med track if that's what I want to end up doing. It is not impossible to be pre-med in chemistry, but I will say it is difficult considering all of the biology prerequisites that you need for medical school. So with biochemistry, I can incorporate some of those required courses into my major plan already instead of having to take more classes. Thank you. Jackson, we were wondering if you could expand a little bit more on what the, Marigli, the Wrigley Institute is. Yeah, so um, it's about, it's right off the coast of California. You carpool to a boat and then you take a boat to this island. Um, and it's this beautiful kind of natural area that's surrounded um, by these grasslands and by buffalo and by all these different animal creatures. And what it really is is a research center focused on the environment and on marine biology because it has such proximity um, to these natural features as well as the ocean. And it acts as a place where a lot of environmental studies courses are able to go on field trips there. A lot of summer courses are hosted there or summer research opportunities are hosted there, as well as a lot of um, kind of during the year um, research projects with faculty and graduate students. 
Um, and so this takes a lot of different forms. For me, as a um, scientific scuba diver at USC, that's where we do a lot of our training and practice. Um, but for other people who are taking classes in like uh, microbiology, it offers kind of a structured place in which you can observe and use the labs there to study kind of micro I guess cells in the ocean are not too familiar with microbiology. Um, but then also it can be a place where students are just able to go for a weekend um, with their club or um, with a specific class. Um, so I'm a member of the Environmental Student Assembly um, and last um, spring um, we hosted 20 students to come spend the weekend on the island and you can do things like snorkeling, hiking, kayaking. Um, so there are all different ways um, to use these, this great facility and it's super unique. Um, that USC has it and it's so open for students to use. Definitely, and that's one place that students can get research. research. And we have another question about, is finding research opportunities with professors extremely competitive or very selective? And do you feel that a lot of your peers opt to participate in research? And maybe, Alex, would you like to start? Sure. Um, so I would first say that in terms of is research like competitive to get? Yes and no. I think it just depends on, I guess, the type of lab or the type of program and I guess whoever's interested in it. Uh, major programs such as I, probably labs that, for example, Layla's and like with the Brain and Creativity Institute probably um, have a little bit more competition. But, you know, there are literally so many resources and ways to get um, research in. Uh, I, I told you before that I got research as a freshman and the way that that happened through me was um, the mathematics department and the economics department actually both sent out um, an email with the research opportunity and they just said apply um, see what happens and I did and I got it so it's just like kind of unbelievable how they're giving you all these resources and they really do want you to succeed and kind of get them um, so I would say they're accessible um, I feel like there's another aspect to the question that I could address do you feel that a lot of your peers do participate in research? Right. Um, honestly, yes, and also no. It really just depends on if people are interested in that. Because USC is really known for its um, research, a lot of students do want to take advantage of that and do. Um, but if you're not interested in that, if you want to take advantage of everything else USC has to offer, you definitely can do that. And you probably won't feel like you're missing out on something or that others are pressuring you, pressuring you to kind of be involved in some research. It's a really good balance. Would anyone else like to add anything to that particular question? Um, going off of that, I would just say that some of the different resources that you can use are going to your academic advisor because they are specifically um, trained in that field and integrated with the professors and research in that field. So it's a really amazing opportunity for you just to meet up with your advisor and say, these are my interests, where can you point me? Um, I would also say that going to office hours, uh, per, your professors have really interesting research and also your TAs um, for almost all of your classes, all of your TAs are involved in under in graduate school research. And so they have a lot of experience with that too. So I've have had friends that have reached out to TAs and have gotten them connected with labs as early as they want to. Um, so I would really say that it's there if you want it. And if you don't want to, it's perfectly okay not to get involved in it. Thank you. And kind of going off of that, you know, using your advisors, your TAs, your faculty as resources. Are there other resources that students should be aware of in case they don't understand a certain subject or if they're struggling in a particular class? Um, I can start this one off. The best resource for me in my science classes is called Supplemental Instruction. Everybody should write this down. Basically, it is a student that has gotten an A in the class, usually a junior or senior. They take the class with you, they take notes in your class, and then once a week, they'll create a study sheet and they'll quiz you on the material, they'll reteach it to you, review it, and they also do exam review sessions before every exam. It helps so much. I have passed so many classes because of that. And they also will take individual questions if you ever email them. Perfect, thank you. And another resource that I always like to mention for students is our Court Check Center. And that office in particular can provide academic coaching and they're a great resource for 
both time management and study skills. So if what was working for you in high school or at a previous institution is no longer working with some of these classes that you're taking, they can kind of help you figure out how to adjust your study skills to maybe match this particular classes that you're in. So both of those are definitely resources that a lot of students take advantage of. And kind of being a natural science and a mathematics major, you know, participating in study abroad and in research, having second majors or multiple minors can be very time consuming. And so would anyone like to talk about how they are balancing kind of that, that load and is, is it manageable to do it all? Yeah, I can speak on that for a second. Um, this semester due to everything being online, I made the decision to take an extra class. So instead of the normal um, 16 units or four classes, I'm taking 20 units, um, which is five classes. Um, and it's my first time doing it. And as well as I'm participating in these um, faculty research projects, as well as I'm the director of a very large student organization. Um, so it is manageable um, if your heart is really set in doing all of these things. Um, so for me, it's quite easy because my research and my organization are things that I find very um, rewarding and enjoyable. Um, and so even when I'm kind of really cramming in on these classes, um, especially we just had midterms a couple of weeks ago, like that was a very busy couple of weeks. But now that I've gotten through that, I'm in a very relaxed position of not having as much schoolwork. And so the biggest thing to make sure you're doing well is to stay ahead. Most classes, they'll either have like a huge research essay at the end or some sort of final exam. And so it's just when you kind of have these slower moments in specific short term assignments to make sure that you're working ahead and to make sure that you're keeping track of everything that is due. I also just want to comment that just because there are all these opportunities and things you can get involved in doesn't mean that you have to like take them all and get involved with all of them. Um, there was one semester where I just completely overloaded myself and was feeling really burnt out. And at that point, you kind of just have to look at everything you're doing. And then if it's interfering with kind of like your well-being as a person, you can definitely um, just, you know, remove an aspect of that and kind of take a lighter whatever it may be. So I just wanted to put that out there because sometimes it may feel like you need to do this, but you absolutely don't. Definitely some good advice. This is kind of a fun question, but if everyone could maybe list what is the hardest class that you have taken? Um, well, currently, I think I'm in my hardest class so far. I'm in neurobiology, which is proven to be quite difficult. Um, and it's taught in like three separate sections. So we had our microbiology unit. Um, and then right now we're in neural circuits. And I never thought that I would have to memorize so many different um, types of circuitry within our body. I mean, I absolutely love it because it's what I'm passionate about, but it's definitely the most difficult class I'm in right now. I'm taking one called, right now actually, um, called number theory. And it sounds like kind of whack because it's like what theories about numbers, but I'm thinking really about um, like there's a specific thing called a division algorithm. And we're learning about like all the properties of prime numbers and how those work with like being divided by other numbers. And you're kind of just learning all these different things about numbers that you never knew existed. Um, so it is challenging because it's a new way of thinking. But again, it is also really cool and really fun to be a part of. I can go next. The hardest class for me so far has been RIT 150, which is required for all freshmen. But I am not very good at writing. So I was spending eight to 10 hours per essay. I pushed myself in that class. So it was a struggle, but I will say it was very rewarding because my professor was amazing. My hardest class was calculus two, um, and I made it through with the help of supplemental instruction, which we were talking about before. Um, but also, this is a reminder that if you are a senior taking AP tests, that USC is very nice about getting out of classes like calculus too if you take the BC test. So take them very seriously, not just for in terms of admission, but also they will make your life easier when you get to the university, um, especially with kind of math classes as well as with the required language component. All right, thank you. 
And do you guys feel that it's easy to get the classes that you want? I know you work with your academic advisors each semester to plan for the courses that you're going to take next semester. But if maybe one or two people want to talk about what the registration process is like and is it easy to get the classes that you'd like? Yeah, so I can start off. So during the registration process, you have mandatory advisement meetings with your academic advisors. So for me, I would meet with my major and my minor advisors to work out uh, what my course schedule is going to look like next semester. So once I speak with them, um, I have my course planning. Uh, I'm also in thematic options, so I have my specific course planning for that also. Um, and as Alex was talking about, I also with my advisor kind of planned out like a four year plan of how I can fit everything I want to do in. So we kind of have like a schedule that I'm working towards. Um, but once you have your advisement meeting and you have kind of a rudimentary schedule, then you can look at your classes um, on the web registration, actually decide what has space, what doesn't. I would say that for me so far, um, a lot of my classes um, like GEs and you know your basic biology and chemistry classes are fairly large and so it's um, easy to get into those because a lot of students have to take those um, and as you gain credits you have earlier access to registration which kind of works out well because as you get older you have to take more specified classes which are harder to get into but um, those times you have uh, priority time slots so USC has done like a great way in planning it out so that when you're a freshman and a sophomore that you don't have too many credits you're able to take more of your basic classes that you have to take and then when you're older and you have priority then you can get into those more um, difficult and smaller classes thank you and our final question will be what made you decide to attend usc i can take that one first um, so fun fact is that I have a twin sister who also goes to USC with me and I was, you know, upon applying to USC and being admitted, hearing about this Trojan family and kind of what that is. And I feel like a lot of schools maybe have these types of like, you know, programs or initiatives or kind of brands that they like to like give off. Um, so I wanted to know like what actually was the Trojan family, like what did that mean? So I actually did come to campus um, just with my sister, just the two of us. We really just walked around the campus, saw everybody just walking, and it honestly seemed like a really like not super stressful environment, but at the same time, there's a lot of energy. People were talking, even people who were kind of just walking by themselves seemed to be having a good time. Um, so it kind of shows that there was like a really cohesive energy. And I think that's a really great way to describe what the Trojan family is, is like cohesive and coming together. So because of the fact that I have a twin sister, we're super close, I'm really close to the rest of my family. That was kind of one aspect of college that I wanted to make sure I would find on a campus. So in that aspect, USC was perfect for me. Um, and then the, the other part of that, coming from Las Vegas, I love sunshine and good weather, and LA was perfect for that. <laughs> My reason is a lot of is very similar to Alex's. So there is a stereotype that pre-med is a really stressful program, which it can be, but I chose to go to USC because when I visited the campus for the first time, everybody was so happy. Like there are some campuses you visit where everybody's really stressed and it's just kind of an anxiety inducing atmosphere. USC just had really positive energy to me. And even when I take classes there, everybody's happy. We all work together, we collaborate in SI. It's a really good place to be that's not too stressful, but you all challenge each other to do better. For me, it was at first looking at this environmental studies degree and seeing how different it was from a lot of other institutions where I got to study all of these different fields. Um, but as I visited campus, as I was here interviewing for scholarships, it just seemed that it made sense for me um, to come to this university as I would have so many more opportunities here I found than anywhere else that I had applied. Um, so that was huge for me as well as looking at how well supported all of the students are here, um, especially in terms of kind of funding for various interests, whether that be summer research fellowships during the semester research fellowships, having funded internships, if they're unpaid, the university can sometimes step in and help fund those. So they're really trying to put their money where their mouth is and get talented students to do 
great things um, that isn't always matched to other institutions. So I found that as a really powerful um, tool to use going into my college years. For me, I think what really drew me into USC was the diversity of people, um, of passions um, and of culture within not only USC, but in LA. Um, USC can sometimes seem like a really big school, but because of that, there is a place for every single person here that steps onto our campus. And I knew that I would be able to find my own niche within the larger community. Um, and so that was what really drew me towards USC. Thank you for that. And thank you so much to, both, to all of our student speakers. And thank you all for joining us today and submitting your questions. We'll be sending you an email after this event with some helpful information and links, including a quick form that you can fill out if you'd like to correspond with a current Dornsife student. Please keep in touch as you need to, especially if you weren't able to get to your questions. It can be confusing about when to reach out to USC's main office of admission versus our admission office in Dornsife. But if your questions fall under any of the topics we discussed today, that would be a really great opportunity to engage further with our office. My colleague Jess is also putting our contact information into the chat. And with that, I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone and I hope you all have a great evening or afternoon, wherever you are in the world.